Hey y'all, it is Dr. Jada and welcome to Mind Matters with Dr. Jada. And we're talking about all things mental health. More specifically, we're talking about pathology. We're talking about sociopaths and psychopaths and um, pathological liars and all the things that make us scratch our head and go, hmm, yeah, that's what we're doing. So I am so glad you are here. Thank you for joining me. But before we get started, I'm going to ask you, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and hit the like button and welcome to the community. Um, and please comment. I want to know. I want to know exactly what it is you think about the content that I am sharing. If you did not know, I am a licensed mental health counselor and licensed professional counselor supervisor. And so my passion is to advocate for all things mental health awareness. And the more I look at the Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade case, the more intrigued I am. So we had a few things come down the pipeline and I just kind of sat back and I watched all of uh, the interaction between the YouTubers and the news and the attorneys and everybody. And I just thought this can't get any better, but it does. It just keeps getting better and better. So here goes another video, another mental health video on the Fonnie Willis case. And so with that being said, um, I guess what I'm going to do first is just dive in and give a brief summary, and then I'm going to dive um, back into the mental health component of all things. And so, um, you know, when I look at law and order, I think about the truth. And that's why there's a swearing in and you, you know, you kind of put your hand on the Bible or you swear in and you do all the things and you say that you're going to tell the truth and truth is supposed to reign supreme. However, in this case, the lies, like not just the lies, but the blatant lies, like the lies, like we have evidence that you said X, Y, and Z. However, Terrence Bradley can just with a straight face say, oh, hmm, I don't know. I, I don't recall. <laughs> I, I have picked up a whole new phrase. I don't recall. I'm going to start using it. I, I got nothing. I don't recall. So I am going to look at a man whose web of deceit is literally unraveling before his eyes and before the eyes of the nation and, and the court, the justice system, revealing not only that he lied under oath, but also the intricate pathology behind the eyes of a liar. And so this Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade case is not just a narrative um, in courtroom drama. It really is a compelling exploration of the human psyche and the complex interplay or exchange of emotions that drive individuals to lie, to deceive, and to manipulate. So the latest move in this ongoing attempt to remove Willis from the legal case that she brought against Donald Trump involves a last minute request to bring new evidence. And so by the time I uh, did this video, then there was another person who came forward with even more um, evidence. So I'm going to lump these two people together and just give kind of a broad swipe overview summary of um, what happened. And then we're going to go into the pathology. And so um, the request was made by David Schaefer, a former chairman of the Georgia GOP, who was also involved in the case. And Schaefer's request aims, aims to subpoena a new witness. Now, this is where it gets even juicier because remember, last Friday, um, all of the closing arguments were, were heard. Everything was shut down. However, the judge left a little small caveat, pretty much saying, if anything comes up before I bring my final ruling in two weeks, let me know. And of course, it, it they did not disappoint. They did not disappoint. So the filing suggests that this witness will support claims made by Terrence Bradley about the timing of the district attorney's interaction with the person, Nathan Wade, whom she appointed to handle 
the criminal case in Georgia against Trump. But at the same time, Schaefer's request also suggests that the new witness will contradict a part of Bradley's testimony about what he had previously said under oath. In other words, she's saying, uh-uh, he lied under oath because uh, no, that's not what he told me. That is not what Terrence Bradley told me. So after we, after watching Bradley's testimony, Cindy Lee Yeager, who is a high ranking prosecutor in Cobb County, had discussions with two defense attorneys over the phone. Yeager disagreed with most of what Bradley said on the stand. And so this is, again, where Terrence is, I mean, the lies just start to unravel. And this is where, at least from a psychological perspective, this is where I go, okay, what makes a person knowingly, knowingly, what makes a person knowingly continue to tell the lies over and over and over when you have clearly told at least three or four different people the truth. So in addition to this particular person who's come forth, Cindy Lee Yeager, another witness comes forth, also suggesting that Fanny Fonny, darn, I keep it, Fanny, Fanny Fonny, Fonny Willis, has had did have a relationship. So indeed had a relationship with Nathan Wade since 2019. Now, this new testimony outlines in a recent court filing that Wade possessed a garage door opener for what's described as their alleged romantic hideaway. So where did this come from? Terrence had a, a business partner and attorney whose name is, and I believe he's a professor, and his name is Manny Aurora. And so Manny says that between September and October of the previous year, based on the court documents, he was able to say that the affair definitely did happen um, back in 2019 to 2020. So interestingly enough, Bradley told Aurora that Wade told him himself that he had that um, garage door opener. So the secret rendezvous place that Bradley also said to Ashley Merchant, now it's all starting to come, come out. So at the core, at its core, now let's get into some, some psychology. Let's really, let's get into some pathology. And listen, y'all, I know that you know people. You're like, I know you lying. I know you are lying, but you're going to continue to lie to me, even though I know you're lying and you know you're lying. So we're just going to play this game and you're going to keep lying. Even if I call you on it, you're going to keep lying. What is that? What is I want you to comment down below. And I want you to tell me, do you know someone who can look you straight in your face and tell you a lie and look at you like you're crazy? If you tell them, I don't believe you. And they'll keep looking at you. Yeah. What is that? What is that? At its core, lying under oath is a betrayal of, is a betrayal of trust, obviously, but not just betrayal of the legal system, but also the betrayal of the fundamental principles that bind our society together. It's where we, um, we connect because connectivity is a basic fundamental human need. It's a, we have to have it. We have to have the safe space and the trust to be able to connect and to allow us to build bridges through our differences, through our disagreements. But here's the big question. What leads someone like Terrence Bradley to, to take such a, 
a combative, conflictive path. And, and I believe the, the real true answer lies in kind of the corridors of human psychology. And so the pathology behind the eyes of a liar. And that's kind of what I, I, I kind of came up with that because I just thought when you're looking at someone, you should be able to look in their eyes and look into their souls. But when you look into the eyes of a pathological liar or someone who's willing to lie to you, either to save face or to protect their image, that's kind of the same thing, or to um, prevent themselves from getting into trouble or whatever the reason is, that hollowness, that emptiness in their eyes may be birthed out of a desperate, desperate need to conceal something that they've done in the past or to evade uh, accountability for wrongdoing. And, and honestly, I think that is a lot of what we're seeing with Wade, with Willis, and with Bradley. All three of them in some way, when I was watching Wade on the stand, he was a little more, um, you know, he was lots of smiling and, but his body language just said, you're not being forthright. And then we had Willis, just her pure aggression when she was on the witness stand, just said, you're covering up something. But when it came to, to Bradley, he took the amnesia, I don't remember approach. Either way, all three of them in some way were lying about something. Now, for others, it may manifest in maybe deep-seated insecurities or a means of kind of elevating a fragile, fragile um ego, but I believe in Terrence Bradley's case, perhaps it was just the toxicity of the combination of ambition, fear, and a misguided sense of self-preservation that literally catap catapulted him down this road of manipulation and deceit and lying. So the consequences of lying under oath extend far beyond the confines of the courtroom, obviously. It can ripple um, outward, leaving a trail of all sorts of um, devastating consequences. And for Bradley, losing his license as an attorney, um, being the big, like his livelihood, um, that just that to me sometimes is just, I can't quite wrap my mind around it. But again, as a therapist, when I think about pathology and I think about how people are so desperate for self-preservation, then it makes sense. So what does all of this mean? Let's look at personality types. I already in another video addressed narcissistic personality disorder or NPD. I talked a little bit about antisocial personality disorder, ASPD. Talked about that in another video as well. What I didn't talk about was borderline personality disorder, BPD. Many of you have probably heard of that, but borderline personality disorder, a person may resort to threats in response to perceived abandonment or rejection. Their fear of abandonment um, and unstable sense of self can lead to very violent, intense reactions, including threats. Um, and so when we're talking about threats, the reason I brought this up is because, and I'm not diagnosing Fonnie Willis, that's not what I'm doing. However, the question came up for Jaeger. She was with Bradley, I believe um, somewhere in her office or somewhere nearby, but they were together. And Bradley got a call from Willis and Jaeger overheard Willis telling Bradley that he better not reveal her personal business. I kind of paraphrased that, but it was something to that effect. However, it came across threatening, at least that's what was said. And so when I thought about that, I thought, what kind of person would threaten another 
in a scenario like this? Well, sometimes if a person has some form of uh, personality disorder, they might engage in those types of behaviors and borderline personality disorder just happens to be one of those disorders. However, here's the one that I really want to focus on uh, today. The psychopathic, the psychopathic portion of why people do what they do. The psychopathy of why people do what they do. So a, a psychopathic individual may use threats as a weapon or a tool to exert power and dominance over others, again, without experiencing remorse or empathy for their victims. And so this is kind of what we're seeing with Willis because not just Bradley, did it seem like she was threatening Bradley, but when we hear about how she uh, maneuvered in her office, there are many who felt that there was that exertion of dominance and that exertion of uh, threatening behavior. So just an interesting thought. Now, um, I just want to I just want to say this. I don't have a dog in the fight one way or the other, but I am just absolutely enthralled at how this is playing out um, in the court system and how people are watching this going, what the heck is really going on? But it looks like the case may be reopened so that we can hear from Aurora and Jaeger to see what did Bradley really say and what did Willis say to Bradley and was it indeed a threat? And did Bradley feel so threatened by Willis that he was willing to lie under oath because he was afraid maybe, or he was in that mode of self-protection because he's almost like, darned if I do, darned if I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I don't want to say anything now. I'm just going to amnesia. I don't recall. I would rather go that route than to tell the truth about what I know. And so that is um, the, the psychopathic uh, um, perspective of maybe why Willis did what she did, why Bradley did what he did, and maybe even why Wade uh, took the route that he took. But let's look at the flip side of the coin. Regardless of personality type or disorder, engaging in threatening behavior, um, in lying, in manipulating, in cheating, whatever it is, there are some other significant psychological implications for both the perpetrator and the victim. Number one, fear and anxiety. So, of course, Threats can instill fear, fear and anxiety in the victim, leading to emotional distress and psychological trauma. Um, and then there's just trauma in general. Threats can traumatize individuals. So I'm wondering, I'm just saying, what do you guys think? I'm just throwing it out there for conversation. Maybe Bradley was on the stage and he had a trauma response because if he's being threatened, is his life in danger? I don't know. They what To what degree can this threat be carried out if it is indeed a threat? I don't know, but I'd love to hear from you all. And then number three would be power dynamics. You know, there are power dynamics in all relationships. Threatening behaviors perpetuates power imbalances in re re relationships. Of course, reinforcing the perpetrator's sense of control and dominance over the victim. Did Willis do that to Bradley? I don't know. I don't know. What do you all think? I'm going to leave it there. I just want to know. So that is the pathology behind some of the relationship dynamics within this case. Um, again, my eyes will be glued, absolutely glued to the screen to see if the judge is going to open up the case to allow these new witnesses to come forward and testify to what they know about what Bradley said, 
about what Willis said, about the relationship, about when it started, all the all the things. So remember, hit the subscribe button and uh, hit the like button, and I will see you in the next video.